So welcome back everyone. We have seen last lecture how to write group multiplication tables, right? And we have also seen the detailed properties of groups using some solved examples. Let us now see how a group can be divided into smaller subgroups. So what is the definition for a subgroup? So subgroups can be formed a subgroup So subgroup can be formed within a larger group such that the order of the subgroup, let us call that order as G, is an integral divisor to the order of the group which is h right so in other words if you take h by g this should be equal to k where k is an integer so that should be very clear so now let us take an example let us take let us quickly write a gmt group multiplication table for water the water is c to v point group right So this is E C to Z Sigma X Z Sigma Y Z. So we will see that how within this group we can find a subgroup using GMT. Okay. So subgroup by definition, the subgroup should follow all the four properties of group like the closure, associativity. Uh, identity and inverse okay so that is understood because from the name it is subgroups c to z sigma x z sigma y z right so let me write uh, easy ones first e into e will be e c to z into c to z will be e sigma x z into sigma x z will be e again sigma yz to sigma yz will be e right that is easy and then the first row e into anything will be c to z will be same it's like multiplication with one similarly here this will also be same now the rearrangement theorem says that no two element in a group in a row or column can be repeated. So in this row, we have seen that C2 and E are already there. And in this column, Sigma XZ is already there. So the only option to write here is Sigma YZ. And you can also test that if I apply. So the meaning of uh, writing Sigma YZ is that if I apply C to Z first, and sigma xz i should have sigma yz which can be easily tested and i leave it for you to test it on this molecule and now the fourth element here the only option is sigma xz right it's like solving sudoku puzzles so again so we have e c to z sigma xy so the only option we have is sigma yz and now sigma xz right here we have e sigma xz sigma yz so we are left with c to z and we are left with c to z here okay so that is a quick way to write group multiplication table now let us see that the order of this group is h is equal to 4 okay so the subgroups can only be of order so G can take values of 1, 2 or 4 because these are the only options where K is an integer. If let's say if you consider G equal to 3, then 4 by 3, this 4 by 3 would not be an integral divisor and thus a subgroup of order 3 cannot be formed in this particular case. 
so a subgroup of order 1 can be formed and subgroup of uh, order 2 can be formed but not necessarily okay so it may or may not be present but these are the only subgroups which may be present so let's see uh, the first thing is the subgroup of order 1 e will always follow all the properties of subgroup right so e will be a subgroup always so let us now see uh, do we have any other subgroup of order 2 so e c to z c to z e so if you notice that this will be another subgroup similarly if you think that e sigma xz sigma xz e that will be another subgroup so let me paint it with a different color so you can see that right so this is a different subgroup and then we have another subgroup which is right with e and sigma y z so it will have different subgroups of order 2 similarly now subgroup of order 4 is basically the full group so that also does not count so basically there are two subgroups of order 1 will be so let's say if we call it as c2v has the elements e c2z sigma xz sigma yz i can always say that subgroup 1 will be e subgroup 2 will be e c2z and so on right so we can write subgroup 3 g3 will be this is not the order so group 1 group 2 or we can say subgroup 1 subgroup 2 subgroup 3 will be e sigma z sigma xz and subgroup 4 will be e sigma yz so i hope this is very clear so subgroups basically can be found within a larger groups and the order of the subgroups have to be integral divisor so that should be very clear now let us look at the other classification of group elements into smaller units which are called as classes okay so before we actually try to understand what is a class let us first try to understand we will come back to this classes but we first need to understand an operation called as similarity transformation some of you already know this from other courses but let's try to work it out here similarity transformation for example if you are taking nmr course the similarity transformation is also discussed there right okay so the idea is if a b and x are three elements of a group such that a inverse b a is equal to x we call x is the similarity transformation of b okay or we can also say x and b are conjugate to each other what does it mean we will come to that what is the physical meaning of that so but the definition is clear so similarity transformation if uh, a b and x are three elements such that a inverse b a is equal to x then we call x is the similar transformation of b or we say that x is the conjugate of b and we will show that b will also be conjugate of x okay so let's uh, try to look at few properties of conjugates or under similarity transformations so properties
So first property is every element is a conjugate with itself. So this means that if we have any element A, then there must be some element and we will show how to prove it, some element X or at least one element X such that a is equal to x inverse a x this is the definition from similarity transformation now we are seeing that there has to be one element x in a group if we have an element a there must also be an element x in the group such that this relation holds so that a is a self conjugate okay so now how do we prove this so let us see if we multiply A inverse on both sides. What do we get? A inverse A. So we have A inverse, X inverse, A and X. This implies that we have E is equal to A inverse, X inverse, A X, which is equal to, if you remember that the inverse of the product is equal to product of inverses in opposite order so that means we can write a inverse x inverse as x a whole inverse into a x right and this will only be possible if so let's go to so e is equal to x a inverse a x this will only be possible if x a is equal to a x right then only we can write that this will be a x whole inverse and then the a x inverse into a x will give you e right so that implies that x and a must commute with each other right that means you must have an element x which should commute with the element a to prove that a is a self conjugate thus x must be present in group such that right so we know that there is always an element e which commutes with all the elements so there is definitely an element e present which commutes with all the elements and thus we can say that a is conjugate to itself okay so now let's look at the second property if a is conjugate to B, then B is also conjugate to A. That means both are related to each other by similarity transformation, right? So now let's see what does it mean mathematically. That means basically what we are trying to say is if we have x inverse b x is equal to a then we must have an element y such that y inverse a y is equal to b so we are saying that if a is conjugate to b then b must be conjugate to a where a b x and y all are 
elements of a group right so now let's start with this x inverse b x equals to a and we can multiply both sides by x x inverse okay so what do we get x x inverse b x x inverse is equal to x a x inverse we can do that right it's a matrix multiplication so now what do we have here so this goes to e this goes to e so basically what we've got is b is equal to x a x inverse but we wanted y inverse a y is equal to b so now this is possible only if let's say if x inverse is equal to y then we can write the above relation as y inverse a y is equal to b now we know that in a group each element must have an inverse so that means y must be present as a x inverse and thus since y is present so we can say that the b is also a conjugate of a right so if a is conjugate of b uh, using a so then b is also conjugate of b using y as a sim for a simulatory transformation i hope this is clear let me know if it is not so third thing is like if two elements are conjugate to a third element when i say element i mean group element not symmetry elements to a third element c let's say if two elements let's call them a and b if two elements a and b are conjugate to a third element then they themselves are conjugate to each other all right what does it mean so that means what i'm trying to say is if x inverse a x gives you c y inverse b y gives you c then there must be an element z in the group such that z inverse z is equal to b then and then there must be another element m let's say also you can show m b m should be equal to a because we have already shown this so i'm not going to show this part so this we have already shown if a is conjugate of b is conjugate of a then a is conjugate of b and all okay but uh, the point here is that if uh, c is conjugate of a c is conjugate of b then a and b are conjugate to themselves okay so now how do we prove this so again uh, let's start with x inverse a x equals to c equals to y inverse b y and now multiply x x inverse on both sides then what do we have here x x inverse a x x inverse is equal to x y inverse b y x inverse right now this side this becomes e this becomes e so we are left with a and we have here we have x y inverse x y inverse b and we have y x inverse y x inverse okay 
so now let us assume x y inverse is equal to z inverse this comes from properties of group so if we have z inverse over here and now if we take uh, inverse of the whole thing x y inverse of the whole thing then we get z now this thing we can write it as y inverse inverse and x inverse which is now equal to z right so this becomes y x inverse right so this term becomes now equal to this so this implies that a is equal to z inverse b z so that means if x and y are elements of the group z is also an element of the group because it is related by product relation or combination relation thus a and b are proved to be conjugate of each other right so that should be very clear so now coming back to definition of class okay now that we have understood what is a conjugate so let's look at the definition of class so a complete set of elements group elements or symmetry operations that are conjugate to each other are called as class okay or are classified as class so let's see what it means again so let us quickly look at some group which will have some classes so let's look at C4V. The operations are E, C4, C4 cube, then you have C2, then you have sigma V1, sigma V2, sigma D1, sigma D2. Okay. Now to identify the class elements in this c4v example you can take anything like square pyramidal okay so to identify what are the elements which are forming a class uh, you have to take similarity transformation of each element using by each element okay so what do i mean so let's take if i'm taking similarity transformation of e by e inverse e c4 inverse e c4 c4 cube inverse e c4 cube c2 inverse e c2 and so on so what do i get here in all these cases you will see that i will get e nothing else right so then we can say that E is a class in itself. So E always forms a subgroup and similarly E forms a class also. Okay. So E is a class in itself. Now let's also look at other operations. Let's see. Let's look at C4. Okay. So if you have a group multiplication table, finding these products is much easier. So that's why the importance of group multiplication table. But let's look at this. So E C4 inverse E. What do I get? C4. Now let's say if I do C4 inverse C4 C4. So what do I get if I do this uh, multiplication? So C4 into C4 will give me C4 square and then C4 inverse will be equal to. So let's, shall we do that or we should either get C4 or C4 cube. Okay. I'm leaving it as a home exercise for you to do it because there is not much time now. So let's try to 
make a point so let's c4 cube inverse c4 c4 cube this should also get c4 slash c4 cube either of this will come out as an answer but what you have to do is you have to if you write this group multiplication table it is easier because then we know what is the product of each otherwise what you can do is you can actually uh, take a molecule do this operation and see what you are getting okay similarly do it for c2 inverse c4 c2 and see what you are getting okay so now when i do these operations on c4 i get either c4 or c4 cube okay similarly when i do these operations this similarity transformations onto c4 cube i get either c4 and c4 cube so that means this tells me that c4 and c4 cube form a class c2 will be a class so again try to for to identify whether c2 will be a class in itself uh, just like we did for e or c4 again do it for c2 so what i mean is then you have to do all the operations to identify what are the conjugates of c2 c4 cube inverse c2 c4 cube and so on so calculate and every time you will get uh, c2 as an answer there is no other element which you will get right similarly if you do similarity transformations of sigma v1 you will get either sigma v1 or sigma v2 okay so that means these sigma v1 and sigma v2 will be forming a class similarly here if you do a similarity transformation of sigma d1 you will get either sigma d1 or d2 and if you do a st on sigma d2 then you will get either sigma d1 or d2 so these two will form a class these two will form a class these two will form a class this will be a class in itself this will be a class in itself okay so now try to work out yourself taking an example let's take an example if you want an easier example maybe take nh3 for c3v and see what are the elements which are forming a class for class also there is a condition that uh, order of the class just like subgroup order of the class has to be an integral divisor to order of the group so thus the so order of the group here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 if h is equal to 8 the class orders which are possible are class orders which are possible are 1 integral divisor 2 4 okay and but it is not necessary that all such integral divisor orders would form a class because now you will see that there is a class of order 1 there is a class of order 1 and there is a class of order 2 2 2 but there is no class present for order 4 in this particular case right so this is the condition but it is not necessary that all the orders which are integral divisors would form a class okay but if it is forming a class it has to be an integral divisor of the original order of the group okay so i hope this is clear so we will take further like the physical significance of what is a class in the next class okay all right so that's all for today thank you